Hello everybody, welcome to VMC, I'm Dr. M. Today we are going to cover everything that you need to know about Giardia, so join me, you'll learn something. Giardia is also known as traveler's diarrhea or beaver fever, but what it is is a intestinal protozoan single-celled parasite. And Giardia exists in two forms. There's the trophozoite, which infects the GI tract of the host, and then there's the cyst form that is passed through the host's GI tract and is defecated out in the feces. This cyst has a wall around it that makes it hardy and so it can persist in the environment for a number of months. Now, it's not fun to think about but the infection route for Giardia is fecal oral transmission. So what this means is that a cyst passed out in the feces of an infected animal is then ingested by another animal. Those fecal contaminants might be in water, in food, or in soil. The fact that only a few cysts can cause infection also means that reinfection is quite easy. Especially since our dogs and cats do some grooming, it is very common that they will groom cysts off of their own bodies and ingest them. There are a couple different genotypes of Giardia and it will depend which genotype your pet has to how easily it will spread to different animals. Say if a dog has Giardia, it's quite easy for them to spread Giardia to another dog, but depending on which genotype they have, they may or may not be able to spread it to a cat. We don't routinely test for which genotype they have, so we have to presume whatever animal has Giardia will be able to spread it to other species. And Giardia is zoonotic, meaning that it is possible for it to spread to people. So we need to be aware of that and very careful. As Giardia affects the GI tract, most of the symptoms that we see are related to GI upset. Things like diarrhea are incredibly common and often that diarrhea can have some mucus with it. However, we can also see abdominal pain or discomfort or cramping. We might also see nausea and vomiting. We might also see things like decreased appetite and weight loss. And these symptoms are quite vague, which can be frustrating and it can take some time to figure out what's causing these symptoms due to how non-specific they tend to be and the fact that there are hundreds of different causes for this list of symptoms. Now, we do have two ways that we can test for Giardia. The first is to do a fecal test where we take some fecal material, look at it under the microscope, with that test, what we're looking for are the cysts. Now, if you find cysts, you can say, yes, this animal has Giardia. But if you do not find cysts, that doesn't mean that the animal doesn't have Giardia. Unfortunately, the cysts are only shed intermittently. That's why we have a second test, which is a PCR test where we look for antigens caused by the Giardia. That is the more accurate and preferred testing method. In order to be successful, a Giardia treatment plan must be multifaceted. The first thing that we can talk about are the prescription medications. Now, depending on where you're located, your veterinarian may prescribe your pet fenbendazole or metronidazole, or they might prescribe the two together. In some areas seem to have Giardia that responds better to one drug versus the other due to abdominal cramping and nausea. Giving pain management and medication for nausea like Serenia are also commonly necessary. Second, we really need to consider a prescription gastrointestinal diet. These diets are easier to digest as their GI tract is currently abnormal and it kind of needs the help in order to get the nutrients out of the food. In consort with with those prescription GI diets, depending on your pet's individual symptoms, we might add in even more probiotics. It's also fairly common that we will add in some additional psyllium for a while. Like I mentioned earlier, it's very possible and fairly easy for pets to reinfect themselves. So during the treatment plan, it is crucial that we are doing a lot of disinfecting and cleaning. Really, this means using bleach on everything possible because we want to kill as many of the cysts in the environment as is possible. Then we also need to give the pet a bath and for every bowel movement that they have after that, we do need to be doing 
doing a spot bath so that any cysts that they may have defecated out that are on their rectum or on their fur are wiped away before they get a chance to groom that area and reinfect themselves. It's also crucially important to be picking up feces as soon as the bowel movement occurs. So if your cat is using a litter box, at the bare minimum you should be scooping twice a day always anyway, but you may need to be doing it more often while you're treating Giardia depending on how often they're having bowel movements. And for your dog, you'll need to make sure that you are supervising them every time that they are outside for a bathroom break and cleaning up any feces immediately. As far as your lawn goes, you won't be able to disinfect that, but over time sunlight will break down the cysts. This cleaning protocol needs to be continued for the entire treatment plan and then for even a few days after the treatment plan has ended ideally. I recognize this is a lot of work and so what I tend to recommend to people is that they use a number of blankets and that every time their pet is resting or laying down that they have them on these blankets and then that they are changing up the blankets at least daily if not twice a day and doing a load of laundry with them just to reduce any potential contamination of your home and make it easier to keep on top of the cleaning and the bathing after every bowel movement is so important you really need to spot wash their back end in order to prevent any cysts from remaining there that they might ingest the next time they grew. And we also need to remember that because Giardia can be zoonotic and it can spread from your animal to other animals, you shouldn't be going to dog parks, etc. You'll also need to be careful about one animal in your household giving Giardia to other animals in your household as well as to people. And so being fastidious about hand washing before eating or after you handle any of your pet's bedding or toys or you pet them. The good news is that most pets recover quite well. Now if the meds aren't dosed appropriately, this can risk refractory infections, which is a concern. And if you aren't keeping up with the cleaning, then you risk reinfections, which is also a concern. Um, but if the treatment plan is executed properly, it is generally incredibly successful. Now, what I do warn people about is that I would expect most of our pets that are treated for Giardia are going to have a bit of a sensitive GI tract for a number of weeks even after the treatment has ended. So you may need to use the prescription gastro diet for say a month or so, same with the probiotics, and generally over time you are able to gradually wean down on those sorts of things and then eventually wean them back over to their research-based over-the-counter diet that meets WSABA guidelines. This individual response to treatment will vary from animal to animal, so you're just going to have to monitor your animal and discuss with your veterinarian what their individual needs are for the short term and then if they still have a sensitive tummy, what they might need over the longer term. I hope that you found all this information helpful. If you have dealt with Giardia with one of your pets, feel free to comment below about your experience. The treatment is a lot of work. I warn people about that, but it's so necessary because doing intensive treatment for a week or so is a lot less work than continually dealing with reinfection that starts to get resistant to treatment. So do make sure to put in the effort if you have a topic you'd like me to discuss in the future, please feel free to comment it down below. I read every single comment and I highlight one every week. Here's the one from this week. And thank you so very much for all of your help getting the sound isolation foam on the two walls that I currently have it on. It has made such a difference with the recorded audio and I'm very grateful for it. If you do have a couple dollars and you've been appreciating the info in my videos, I would appreciate the help to get the rest of the foam that I need to put on my ceiling, but do not feel any pressure about that either. The start that we've been able to do has been excellent and it's made a difference already. I do put out a new video most Fridays, so I look forward to seeing you in the next one. All right, bye.